Hi, this is Jasek, and in this PHP tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create a function which will create a thumbnail image from a bigger image. Well, it doesn't have to be bigger, but typically it would be. Um, so, we're not going to be making this or creating this as part of an example of anything, so we're not going to be making like a forum or profile or anything. It's just going to be basically just a function and a very small example of sort of how to um, use it, I guess. Um, so, these are the four files we're going to be working with. We've got these two images which are going to be used for testing, so one of them is, um, well the reason we've got two will become a bit clearer later, but um, there's sort of two ways that it has to work, and I'll explain all that later. But we've got these two images, and like I said, they're just going to be used to test the, um, well, the function. And these two files here, the PHP files, are the ones we're going to be focusing on for most of the time. Um, the create.php is just going to be um, sort of to simulate um, a page, so or you know another script, another file, wherever you might want to use this function. So in there we're just going to be creating a very simple example of how to use the function. Um, and then this image.inc.php file is one that would typically be in sort of the back end area of your site. Um, and this is going to be the file that defines this function which is going to create the thumbnail. So I think that's enough explanation. I guess we should get on with the actual code. So let's go across to my editor and we'll start with the backend image.inc.php file and the first thing we're going to do is just define the sort of outline of the function so I'm just going to create a new function its name is going to be create thumbnail and then we're going to add some parameters so the first one is going to be the path and that is going to be the name of the file or the location of the file that we want to make the thumbnail from the next one is going to be called save not Dave and that is going to be the uh, location that we want to save the thumbnail to um, and then we're going to have the width and the height except I'm going to spell width right uh, height so these are going to be obviously the width and the height of the thumbnail so typically this would be something like you know 100 and 100 for a nice square fairly small image Okay, so within our function, the first thing we're going to need to do is get some information about the image we're trying to get, you know, create the thumbnail from. So the way we're going to do that is by using the get image uh, size function. I think I've spelled that right, it looks okay. And this function takes one parameter, which is the location or the name of the image that you want to get information for. So this is just path, except path, not how you'd say that. Okay and we're going to store this information in a variable called info like so. So for the sake of testing let's just print this out and then we'll go on and call this function so let's just do print info and then let's go to our page which is where we're going to be working for most of the time and let's just call create thumbnail um, and we're going to be, we'll pass in the higher image first which I think was called tall I can't actually remember so I'll have to check that in a moment and for the second parameter we'll just leave it blank for now and let's just do 100 and 100 for the width and height at the moment these are the parameters aren't used so it doesn't really matter what we use so let's go to our browser and let's open up the create, it was tall and as you can see I've forgotten to include the file so that was pretty pro of me so let's just do that so typically like I said this would be like an example of a page or uh, I don't know a register script or something like that so you would obviously be including this backend file um, somewhere in there, it's just that I forgot because I'm silly. Um, what was it called? Image. Okay, let's try again and hopefully it'll work. Okay, good. So you can see this is the information that we've got on the image. We've got its, well it doesn't actually tell you what these are, but it's the width, width and height. Um, this is, I've forgotten, it's the number of bits I think, so it's to do with the colour, but you can check that if you want. This is a string that you could use in the image tag bits is the number of bits of colour, I don't know what parameter 2 is um, and mime is the important one, that's the type of image and you need to know that so you can load it um, into the GD or good library <laughs> um, so that's why we're calling this function here so let's go back to our script and carry on now we know what information we've got so for the sake of convenience I'm going to define another variable here called size and this is going to be equal to the image size so because we're dealing with a lot of sizes and widths and heights and stuff all over the place within this function um, we're going to be using arrays to represent um, sort of a vector 
an x and y coordinate so we'll define a new array and we'll you, you, um, put the width into parameter 1 and the height into parameter 2 so we'll just say um, info 0 here and info 1 so now we've got size so we can use size 0 and we'll know that's always the width and always the height and we'll be using some similar arrays a bit later on so now we've decided well now we've got that information we can create the actual image resource which we'll then be able to manipulate to create our thumbnail so we need to do something different for each of the supported types so we'll just create a simple if statement to check the mime type which was stored in um, this variable if you remember from the output a moment ago so if that is equal to image uh, PNG we'll do something and if, if it's e well otherwise if it's equal to um, the other ones we'll do something different so image uh, JPEG otherwise the other one is image GIF so info mime is equal to image GIF GIF okay there we go and if it's none of those as in the else condition that means that this format is not supported so we'll just return false like so so inside each of these we're going to be creating a variable called source or src for short which is going to be equal to one of the image create from functions so these functions take one parameter which is the file name and they create a image resource which then you can then use to you know, do various things with manipulate the image so image create from and then it's the type so in this case PNG and it just takes the path like so so what we can actually do is just copy this down into the other sections to avoid typos on the from um, and then just change the name so in the image JPEG section it should be from JPEG and in the GIF section it should be from GIF without the D okay there we go so then down here we know that we've got a image source that we that we can um, use to well create our thumbnail so now that we know we're okay we can create a new image of the size that we want you know to output in the end um, and we're going to copy our source image onto that image so that's the whole process so let's create a new variable called thumb short for thumbnail fairly obviously like so and this is going to be equal to image create true color the American spelling of color that often trips me up but uh, never mind this takes two parameters one being the width and one being the height um, the reason we have to do this by the way is that there is no way to directly resize an image image resources sort of by definition have a size and you can't change that size so what we need to do is create a new image that's the size we want and copy the original one onto it so that's what we're doing so next thing we're going to do is define two aspect ratios because we need to check uh, well we need to check a few conditions so say if the image is wider well say if the image is wider than the thumbnail we're going to treat it slightly differently and I think the best way to demonstrate this would be via you know images because that's sort of the what we're doing so let's just have a look at the two types of image we could have here now oh, I was meant to hide those blue squares but never mind um, so say if the image is higher than the thumbnail we want this is the situation we've got here so um, what we're going to be doing is essentially cropping out the blue box area and um, resizing that to our thumbnail size so hopefully that makes sense it does in my head um, so as you can see there is a difference between the two um, aspect ratios the, the two types so we need to check to see if we're dealing with this case or if we're dealing with this case because for the taller one we want to crop off the top and for the wider one we want to crop off the sides so to do that we're going to define um, two variables one for the aspect ratio of the source ie the actual image we're dealing with so this butterfly here and one for the um, actual thumbnail that we're trying to create which would be the blue square in this case okay so let's just go back to our code and we'll do that so just down here after we've created the thumbnail we'll define another variable called source 
aspect without the V. And this is going to be equal to the size 0 divided by the size 1, which is the width divided by the height. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for the thumbnail, so we'll call it thumb aspect. This is going to be equal to simply width over height, like so. And these are just the two parameters from up here. So once we've done that, we can use a simple if statement um, to check if we're dealing with you know, which of these cases we've got. So if it's taller, if it's wider, or if it's the same size, it's the third one. So we can do that very simply now that we know the aspect ratios by doing if source aspect is less than thumb aspect, except spelt right, I think. That means that it's narrower. So let's just add a comment so we know what we're doing. Um, and by narrow I mean the um, the thumbnail is narrower. No, wait, sorry, the image is narrower, so we want to crop off the top and bottom. Otherwise, if the source aspect is greater than the thumb aspect, that means that the source is wider so wider otherwise same shape okay so with that done what we need to do now is decide on what's going to happen for each of these cases and since I've just got to the 10 minute mark I think we'll leave that for part 2 so thank you for watching and come back for part 2